Hey everyone, today I wanted to take a look at a really good UX case study. I think this is a, it's good to know if you're looking to build out your portfolio of case studies. And I think it's really good to learn from what other people have done. I'm going to link this one in the description if you want to check it out. So this is over on Behance and this is by Vavara Kucharova. I hope I've said that properly from Copenhagen in Denmark. And she's put together a really nice case study. So we'll go together and I will review it kind of as a hiring manager would. If I was looking to hire uh, a UI UX designer, product designer, and we'll see what we learn. So this is, uh, this has been put together in Behance. The, the effectively really long columns, uh, the, the basically images stacked on top of each other. So you could do this in Figma, export it, kind of individual JPEGs and stack them together. Well, let, let's take a look and see what we can learn. So this is an ABC, it's an uh, uh, English learning app. And then there's a really nice cover picture. So I can see straight from the top, it, UI UX design, which is what I want. It's a concept and it's uh, at least relevant to 2024. And then there's a picture of a person holding a phone with a mock-up of the design on it. Straight away, uh, I kind of get what it is. Um, and I really like mock-ups being near the top. At least then you can see the final product and then you can you want to then learn how to process to get to that. So let's take a look. So as we go down, there's a little bit of about section. This is all laid out. The typography is very, very nice in this. Laid out kind of like it, it was a magazine. So we've got uh, subjects about, and then we learn that with the uh, chat GPT integration and the task. So what's the task? To conduct research, to create a user-friendly English learn that with clear navigation and modern and memorable visual style. So there we go. I, I do like these mock-ups, especially at the beginning. Uh, it's a carrot to find something nice to have. The websites where you can go ahead and mock up images like this pretty easily. So then let's go down here. Do I normally skip stuff like this? Some user personas. So there's a couple of user personas. These are very, very basic. Uh, sometimes in a, in a case study, you don't need to show all of your work. You just need to show kind of highlights. So there's a couple of, uh, just, there's no images on here, but it's basically got the essential. It's got, you know, it's got goals and motivations, pain points, preferences, and expectations. And that's kind of what you, you want from a uh, persona. A, a lot of the rest, I think, is fluff and not really needed. Really, you want to understand what their pain points are and then um, what their expectations of the app is going to be. So there we go. We've got two. We've got a lady and a male. They're different ages there. So as we go down, what have we got here? Let's we'll keep flowing. So there's a user flow. Uh, quite nice the way she's done it in a dark mode version. So it's kind of broken up the uh, the visual presentation of this, which I, I kind of like. I mean, you notice she hasn't used black. She's kind of used like a dark gray with these uh, pale styles. I, I think the visual presentation of this tells me that the good designer straight away. And then this is kind of just evidence of the other UX. So it's just a flow chart going through the application. Breaking it up again with nice finished images. I like the way that they, these, they look very different the way they are a photography style uh, on a mock up. Um, I think that just looks a bit nicer sometimes than just showing uh, kind of like a, uh, it's the, the vector graphic of a phone or something like that. This, this, she's a really good designer, by the way. You can tell she comes from a graphic design backdrop. So as we go through information about typography, there's not too much research here, to be honest. She's got this. Case studies don't need to be the whole project, but if this was a real project, there would have been more research that was involved in this. Then we've got some icons that she used. You don't really need to show these if you're doing more of a product design and portfolio case study. They're kind of nice to have. In real life, you'll probably be using a UI kit that has typography and their icons in it. So unless you specifically are interested in graphic design, which you clearly are, these are kind of nice to have. But if we go down, here's some wireframes. You could also include some sketches before you do the wireframes. I think it's nice to kind of see um, a bit of pen on paper. Even if you don't do it all the time, it's kind of just nice to show the journey. Uh, wireframes, really good. Quite a lot of wireframes here. But, um, I mean, look at the way she's laid it out. It, it's all very visually nice. So this is how fast I would skin it as well if I was, uh, if I was reading it. I mean, look at that. That's... I like the way that's breaking it up. So as we go down, here's some different flows. And um, it's actually quite a simplistic app. You see it's all black and white. Nice design, but then she's broken up with the colors here. That looks good. 
again, breaking up of images, nice round of corners. So as we go down, here's the main page. So uh, this is quite a nice way to show her design. So she explains what the page is about, and then she has just done it really nicely. This big pink, uh, this purple circle in the background, and she's got the phone, and then she kind of shows her the, the scrolling of it uh, all the way down. In real life, she just bar at the bottom here, the tab bar, that would actually be on screen at all times because that would be a, that would be a sticky element. But it's just nice the way she's shown it. And then here's the screen. So I would be skinning through it like this. Then she got a library section here. So these are books and images that you can do. Changing the colors for all. This is nice. What would be nice is kind of, um, I always like to encourage people to put maybe video stuff into, into your case studies so I can understand you as a person and you can talk through this. So as you can see, I'm skipping it through quite quickly. I'm, uh, I'm kind of getting the gist of what it is. Um, so here's like a vocabulary section. I'm not reading too much, to be honest. I'm, I'm kind of just uh, scrolling through. This is how much time, because if you're getting 10 applications, you've got to, you're not going to read every word on it. But I like the way she hasn't got too much text. It's quite, uh, quite minimalistic, this design. The colors really pop. Very nice. Again, then we've got a landing page. So again, she's got, it looks like a landing page for a website, which would then tell you to download the app, I presume. I really like where she's done this mock-up. I don't know whether she's taken the photography herself and put them on or whether she's done it. So this is the website. Very nice design there. What you can do is sometimes you can embed, I'd like to see some links to uh, some, uh, I don't know, even maybe like a Figma prototype or see a video of her walking through the Figma prototype. Here's some graphic design here. You can touch on some of the graphic design back down where she's doing posters with the app. Uh, and then that's the end of it. What would be nice if you wanted to take this a little bit further is she could have shown some user in almost like uh, some user research really where she could have talked, uh, showed photographs of her testing the app and getting feedback and then shown where the app was improved. I think that's always nice because way when you design something in real life, some of the designs, they're always version one. And then when you get user feedback, we then go to version two and three. And then at the end, maybe talk about what bits you improve based on feedback. It's okay not to show the final designs. It's okay to show the version one, version two, version three, and tell the story throughout. And then it's also, it's also so nice to be, and maybe say what you would do next. This was really, really, you would look at analytics and maybe a quantity improving it on. But this is an example of, I think, a good, really good case study. But I, almost like a 10 out of 10 for the design, for uh, the graphic design implementation of this. You know, it's it's a fine art, really. It's a fi it's a fine balance of um, making these too long or too short. You don't really want to make it too long. But you can see this was highlighted here for UI. She's clearly from a graphic design background, like brilliant art director. You might not be like that. You might be from a more research background. So in your one, you would do that. The visuals are more about the user read the the uh, behind the scenes photograph. I think it's okay to put some of the stuff in. With product design, people come from different backgrounds all the time. And uh, as an Iron Manager, you, you, are, you are a team which is made up of really people with different skill sets so they can learn each other. I'll leave the link in the description. Let me know what you think. I think it's a really good one. If I, if I was hiring and I wanted someone with a graphic design background, uh, I'm a UI designer, then I would, uh, you, you know, then I'd this is one good scope. So let me know what you think.